Are we being fair to him? Is the country being fair to him in saying that he's got it wrong and he should have this thing lasered off as soon as possible? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, um, knowing him personally, um, you kind of understand where he's coming from and it's his personal evidence, isn't it? It's personal experience. Um, and, you, and you believe that that's that defence to you, that uh, it's a tribute yeah. to his father and his pledge to his, yeah. his father's memory, never to touch a gun? Yeah, that's I true. mean, yes, I think knowing him from... Uh, and working with him from eight years old, mm -hmm. you know his life, you know, speaking with him, I guess, every day, um, working with him every week, um, you know that some things are more personal to, to others and, and you know, who are we to say that it's not true? You know? So setting that aside and mm -hmm. accepting that, taking that at face value, Nevertheless, do you think it was a bad decision to have an assault rifle to tattooed onto his leg? The, maybe the timing could have been better. <laughs> um, but like I said, you know, who are we to say to him that, well, what you, you've gone through in your personal life and there's nothing worse than losing a parent to, to, to a violent death. Mm. There's been a big reaction, anti-gun campaigners are calling for him to be dropped from the World Cup squad. As a consequence, they're calling him for him to have it removed because they're not happy by what it signifies. Um, well, like I said, maybe the timing could have been better. But there are many, many, many um, football players and artists and mm. music artists that have tattoos that we may find offensive, mm. you know. Um, but uh, for me, I just think it's... Um, it's a personal it, it's, decision. It's a personal, it's a but, personal decision, but uh, again, like, who are we to actually take that away from him? Do you think, that... as a footballer, though, with, you know, having the profile that he does, he does have an added responsibility. He's a role model for many children, many young people who will look up to him and see a tattoo like this, and maybe if they don't know the background of it, they'll just think that he's endorsing guns. Yeah, well, like I said, we could make... I could look at a tattoo of a skull and crossbone and think, well, that's quite offensive, and... But whoever... Tattoos are something personal to, to the individual. He also says that the tattoo is work in progress. It isn't actually quite finished. Do you have any idea what he means by that? I mean, is there going to be, a, a, like, a daffodil coming out of the barrel of a gun? Or what? I mean, I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I mean, it, what does he mean when he says it's not complete? Well, I, I think we just have to wait and see, to be honest. So, because... you, don't, you don't know? No, no, I don't know. I mean, like I said, we, we have to wait and see. Because if he's saying it's unfi unfinished, it could be when the finished yeah. uh, article... But, could you see, I think Charlotte's got a really good point there when she says it's all very well that, that in his head, and he's mm -hmm. now made a statement about it, it's to do with his father, but, you know, football fans on the terraces aren't really going to connect with that. They're just going to see a guy on, on, on the pitch with, with an assault rifle on his, tattooed onto his leg, and they're going to take a message. It's a bit like if I had a swastika on my cheek, and I could come up with a complicated explanation of losing family in the last war, and it was, it was some kind of complex statement, but it's not a particularly bright thing to do, is it? I, I understand, but it's, it's not going to be seen you know, on the pitch, it's maybe seen in training, but on the pitch, it's not going to be, you know, in the World Cup, it's not going to be visible. Mm. When we talk, it's never about football. I just think, like, mm. look, keep your feet firm on the ground. Um, understand that you're in the public eye. But if he was a white player, he wouldn't have had this criticism. He wouldn't be on the front page of the Sun. We wouldn't be talking about it. What do you make of that? Well, look, you know, um, let's be real. What we're looking at here, he's a, what, the most second influential player for England in this World Cup. And he's never had an easy time. He, he, he can't win, no matter what he does. If he comes with a, a, an easy jet, um, mm. he gets criticised. If he buys a posh car, he gets criticised. Mm. So my thing is, you, you know, um, knowing him personally, it's one thing I always say to him, a king always builds his castle with the same stones that are thrown at him. Yeah. You know, and it's one thing that... He's 23. This isn't the first time he's come in for, for, for criticism, generally. And it's interesting, my son, of course, is white, made exactly that point yesterday. He, he believes that the, the, this player is getting the kind of uh, attention and, to some extent, abuse because of the colour of his skin. And, and he also thinks that some of the criticism he's had over the last year or two is basically racist um, in its origin. Would you, would you say that's true? Yeah, well, I think... Um... He's a white kid. My, my son's a white boy. Yeah, kid. well, look, let's be real about this. When he was going from Liverpool to Man City, um, and even corresponding with him, the amount of abuse he had. Mm -hmm. And then we must not forget, he doesn't get up in the morning and say, I'm going football. He gets up in the morning and say, I'm going to work. Now, all of us on this panel, it's not our first job mm. that we've been in since leaving university or school, whatever. And we were moved for various reasons, for better prospects, more money, better opportunities. Mm. Uh, and all he did was move from one company to another. He went from Liverpool to Man City. And yet, it's the ridicule he had for that it's relentless, and, and we could easily pull out the colour card and, and, and say, you know, make it a focal point of it, but mm. let's look what underpins it all. Mm. You know, um, the society, you know, if I walk into a room, you know, what do you first see? Do you see a, 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 a male or do you see a black male? Mm. You know, and that's, all, that's what, the way you've got to look at it. Mm. And, yeah, he's... 
you know, if you look at every world, well, the last World Cup, same thing. Mm. And I don't understand if we're behind the nation, you know, we, our, our, our team is going to a nation and he's worked very hard to get where he's, um, from the age of eight, that was his dream to play in the World Cup. Mm. And we kind of like, you know, destroy people's dreams before they even kick a ball. Mm. Mm. My initial reaction yesterday uh, as on air was, I mean, as a father, I thought, well, th this is just ridiculous. I mean, mm. this is going to influence kids. He's a 23-year-old man who happens to be a very popular footballer mm. who is going to influence loads of people and normalise guns and violence. And, and then I thought about it after, and I thought, yeah, but if it was a white player, would yes. that have happened? Yeah. And I'm sort of conflicted. I mean, I still think that, you know, he is an influential having person. Having a gun tattoo on your leg, I feel, would still upset yeah. people, though, to the same degree. I mean, do you think he'll consider having it removed, or is he just going to um, keep it now? Look. You know, what Raheem decides to do is, is up to him. Like I said, for me, if he's... I've known him very well. If he said it's a personal statement, like I said, who are we to take that away, away from okay. him? 